Buenos dias, Parkrest. My name is Rogelio Rodriguez. I get to be one of the pastors here. And my name is Anna, and I get to be a part of the team, the adult ministries team here at Parkrest. We just want to take a minute to say good morning. Thank you for being here, especially if you're new. If this is your first time or you're just new to Parkrest, we are so grateful that you've decided to join us. In just a few minutes, we're gonna jump into a time of worship. We'll get to hear a word from Jared and we'll share this time of communion, which is this really beautiful and intimate time. And we need that during Zoom era. That's right. Um, I've been part of Park Crest since March, so since the pandemic. So I'm fairly new myself, but something that I really love about Park Crest is that we are still looking for ways to connect and engage with one another. We just launched our home community group, so shout out to my home community group for being so brave and showing up this past Monday. If you are looking to connect, it is not too late. We have so many different ways for you to jump in and get involved. You can go to Park Crest forward slash links, and it's not too late to to join a home community group for yourself, I highly encourage it. We are still connecting, still meeting, and it's really good for all of our souls. So thank you again for joining us. Stick with us as we begin in this time of worship together.
This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. When we praise God, when we praise Jesus, we get a glimpse of heaven. And the reality is that in this season, life has been difficult and life certainly has been different. Uh, but the truth is that when we gather as a community, even in a virtual way, we are reminded that God is so much bigger than our own living room, that God is so much bigger than the space that you're currently in, but that we're challenged by being together with other people to realize that our God is so much bigger than Long Beach, that our God is so much bigger than California, that our God is so much bigger than the United States of America, but that he is to be worshiped all over the world, that my family this morning, uh, 10, 12 hours ago, went to church and they celebrated that same Jesus that you and I are celebrating right now because God is so much much bigger than our own four walls. And the beauty is that we as a Parkers community are a diverse community. We speak many languages, we come from many places, and we are better for it. We are more beautiful for it. We are more full of hope because of it. And so this morning, I want to invite you, Parkers, to lean in with me. We're going to worship Jesus in a different language. And some of you speak it, some of you do not speak it. But the beauty of it is that we can come together and worship from the depth of our beings, from the depth of our hearts, because Jesus is to be worshipped all over the world. He is so much bigger than the spaces we're in right now. So would you lean in? Would you make your living room? Would you make the watch party? Wherever you're watching from, would you make those spaces a space of worship? Because Jesus is beautiful. He's powerful. Powerful and he's so much bigger than anything we could imagine. So would you sing? Would you pray? No prosperar al arma forjada. La oscuridad no prevalecerá. Porque el Dios que sirvo siempre triunfará. Mi Dios no fallará. Mi Dios no fallará Voy a ver la victoria Voy a ver la victoria La batalla es tuya Señor Voy a ver la victoria Voy a ver la victoria La
So pray with me. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Vénganos hoy tu reino. Hágase su voluntad en la tierra como es en el cielo. And God, that is our prayer. That your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to personally connect with that. Help us to see that our hands and feet can contribute to creating heaven on earth. But God, not by our own efforts, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to lean in. Help us to lean into your spirit. Danos ojos que ven y oídos que escuchan. Eyes to see, ears to hear. That we may be your body. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And as we think about what heaven on earth looks like, we just have to consider that the way we share our resources, the way we, we give of ourselves through our offerings is absolutely a part of that. It is a tangible contribution to moving heaven to earth, to creating a new space. When I think about tithes and I think about offerings and the way we give of ourselves, I often think about Jose, who lives off of the 605 freeway. Every time we exit Delamo Boulevard, my kids are in the back seat. As we're pulling on to the on-ramp from off-ramp from the 605, my kids get excited because they start reaching in our snack box and they get a bottle of water, they get some snacks, and they say, Pop, I hope Jose's there today. And recently I was talking to my mother-in-law as she was driving my kids home. And she told me this really kind story saying how now she's carrying these meal boxes in her car because my kids pleaded with her to be ready to offer something to Jose. And I think about the lesson we get from that. Giving is not something we have to do. Giving is a way that God shapes our hearts and, and places us into a posture of offering and sharing our lives with the lives of others. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm grateful that we get to partake in that. And so I wanna encourage you to partake. I want you to encourage you to, to partner with us through your giving and offerings. And, and there's lots of ways to do it. You can give online, you can text to give. My family does it online because it's just convenient, but however you choose to give, we're grateful for that. And we will honor those gifts. And, and we know that it is just one of the ways that God is tangibly shaping heaven on earth. So thank you for that. And so again, we're going into week two of our We Are series. This is a vital series to defining who we are as a church. So join me as we get to listen to Jared teach us. Um, I do just want to remind you before we start, grab your Bible, grab some notes, maybe get your communion elements out and ready, but we're excited to jump into week two with you. Hey, welcome Parkcrest to week two of our series, We Are, where we are defining who we are as a church and where we believe God is calling us all in our mission, vision, and values. And maybe you're joining us and you just started a new community group. want to say thank you so much for taking that step last week. We're so excited that you can go through this because we firmly believe that the Christian life is never meant to be lived alone, that it's meant to be lived in community. Uh, and so uh, we're going to talk about a couple values today, and I want to start out by, I got a couple friends with me who I think are going to really help me bring this out. So here's one friend. It's Bunny. Bunny is obviously a bunny rabbit. And then we have this other friend who is Rainbow, and Rainbow is a powerful unicorn. And when I mean powerful, she's really, really, really. Powerful. So maybe you are a child and you have your own little comfort toys. Go grab them right now and just hold on to them for a minute. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. So who are these friends? Well, Bunny belongs to Naomi and Rainbow belongs to Zoe. And these are their comfort stuffed animals. And so like, 
when they get really upset, when, when their world is falling apart, oftentimes they will draw to these two stuffed animals. There's sometimes, and we have to get this recording right, you know, because I got to get these back before they go down for nap <laughs> really quickly. But, it's, but you guys know, if you have children, they have, whether it was a comfort blanket, uh, a comfort bunny, a comfort unicorn, a comfort stuffed animal, whatever it is, is that when they are stressed, when they are feeling uncomfortable in a moment, we draw to these items. So let me ask you a question. When you get uncomfortable, where do you go? What is your bunny? What is your rainbow? You see, this is why we're talking about this this week. So there, there, there are a couple values I want to go ahead and name uh, that we're going to go through today. The first one is this. It is stretch toward. And it literally says this. is We reach out even when it's uncomfortable for the sake of another. I'm going to read that one more time. We reach out even when it's uncomfortable for the sake of another. Stretching. So I, I work out, but I'm not very flexible, and I'm working on that. If I value flexibility, then I have to be able to stretch. If I value the physical fitness, then, then I'll have to be able to work on my stretching. And guess what? As I stretch, it's really uncomfortable, and it hurts. But guess what? By stretching, I'm becoming healthier. With this value, we believe if we stretch towards one another, we are building the kingdom in a new and unique way that scripture calls us towards. That yes, sometimes it is uncomfortable to stretch towards someone. Sometimes it is uncomfortable to stretch towards someone who thinks or looks or acts differently. But we believe here is a value that we don't run away from those who have differences uh, from us, but we stretch towards them. The second one is this. It's courageous diversity. It says this, we intentionally pursue, respect, and honor differences of thought, opinion, age, and ethnicity by sacrificing our own personal comfort, by sacrificing our personal comfort. You know, there are two words that book in this one, courageous being the first and comfort being the second. So what am I saying? I'm saying this, is that you can't be courageous and comfortable. You have to choose one. In our church, we are de deciding to lean on what does it mean to be courageous? What does it mean for us to pursue uh, different relationships, pursue that we can, in essence, build the kingdom of God? You see, when we intentionally choose courage over comfort, we are able to, just as this value says, to pursue respect and honor differences of thought, opinion, age, and ethnicity. Now, here's the thing about it. When we talk about diversity, I know oftentimes we just simply jump to race, and that's one of the hot topics of today. But I want to take time and expand that. In our literal definition, it's not just race and ethnicity. It's also age. It's also diversity of thought. It's also diversity of opinion, which could mean political. It could mean socioeconomic. All these things that shape us, when we are building the kingdom of God, we are going to encounter people with differences. And But how do we work towards a reconciled unity as opposed to moving apart? It takes someone being courageous. And Jesus showed us a fantastic example of what this means. I want you to turn your Bibles uh, to Hebrews uh, chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 14, and we're going to read through verse 16. And it reads, it says this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize Underline that in your Bible right now. Empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, Christ pursued us. And in Christ's pursuit, he left the comfort of heaven in order to live out his calling. You see, if we want to stay living in our comforts, that may be prohibiting us from walking into God's calling. And what was his calling? His calling was to reconcile a diverse humanity back to its creator, but also to reconcile a diverse humanity towards one another. Now, how did he do this? You see, John 1.14 gives us a glimpse on Jesus' process. Uh, it says this, it says, The word became flesh and he made his dwelling among us. 
We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. You see, when he left his comfort of heaven and he came down, it says literally he dwelled among us. The Greek word is, it, it, it is described as he tabernacled among us. He, he became flesh. He became like us. And out of that, he reconciles. He stretched out of heaven. He stretched towards us, and he became someone who was different in order to bring us back to himself. You see, so what do we gain? What did Jesus gain? What do we gain by, by leaving our comforts, by leaving our unicorns and bunnies? What do we gain? You see, let's talk about what Jesus gained. You see, Jesus gained an understanding of what it meant to be human. Which is why in Hebrews it says that we have a high priest who can empathize with us because he was tempted in the same way that we are. He was tempted at every single point that we are, but yet he did not sin. He gets us. He understands us. You see, we gain when we leave our comforts and stretch towards and practice courageous adversity, we gain an understanding of the other. We gain an understanding of the other. We move from gaining understanding of the other to the second thing, to having empathy. You see, this, this, it said that Jesus Christ empathized with us because he took on human flesh. He empathized with our weakness. He empathized with our pain. Who in this season do you have opportunities to have empathy, empathy excuse me, towards? You see, right now I have empathy towards a lot of other pastors, you know, because right now in this season, it seems like every or any decision we make, there is going to be some kind of pushback. And that's just happening on a daily basis uh, to myself and even some of, some of my colleagues as well. Any decision that we make is, is, is run through a filter and we're pushed to one side or whatnot. So I have empathy for pastors in this season who are leading their churches the best way that they can. Here's the second thing. I have a lot of empathy right now for our teachers. What do I mean? You see, every teacher, administrator, you are here and you did not sign up to be teaching uh, in a pandemic via Zoom. I know what it's like to have your technology fail in the middle of a lesson. <laughs> I know what it's like. To, to, to have your plan, and then your plan is thrown off. If you guys remember, we were doing Worship Wednesdays. There were a few weeks in a row where it's like it kept cutting off, and there was nothing that we can do. Well, it was our intention to, to create this space, but technology prohibited us from doing that well. Like I was in a Zoom lesson the other week, and all the technology just went, went awry. It wasn't the teacher's fault. It wasn't the student's fault. It just happened. And I've talked with teachers and had the opportunity to pray with them. And this is hard for them. And I can empathize with them because I know what it feels like to have a plan and then to have that plan just be thrown on its head. I can have empathy for them. Understanding the empathy. I have empathy with parents. As I sit beside my daughter um, who loves Rainbow, and she's doing a Spanish immersion class right now, I have no idea what the teacher's saying. I'm sitting beside her, and I'm like, okay, como esta? All right. Bien, gracias. He too. Like, and that's the extent of my Spanish. You know, and, and, but I know other parents who are, you're, you're trying to juggle your work. You're trying to juggle your job and do well here and do well here. You're trying to do well at home and do well and, and, and create an environment to where you're, you're your kids can learn and thrive. It is hard. And guess what? I have empathy for you. You see, when I leave my place of comfort and I dive into the life of someone else, my heart grows. You see this, we cannot fully enter into another person's world and not be changed and not be changed. You see, we gain a perspective. There is a journey that we take. There was a journey when Jesus Christ came from heaven and came down to earth and he, and he, and he dwelled among us and, he, and, and his heart grew towards us. His heart grew towards our pain. His heart grew towards our, and, and he had empathy. And, and let me tell you this, that is how we build a church of people who don't look or think like us. That's a, that's a kingdom philosophy. Like, wouldn't it be boring if everybody was exactly the same? Like, God has created this amazing flavor, and I want to be able to tap into that in an amazing way. You see, we have to value courage over comfort. 
we can't pursue both of those at the same time. We are gonna pursue our stuffed animals, our blankets, or we're gonna take the risk and pursue the person. You see, courage compels us to reach out while comfort causes us to remain stagnant. I'm gonna say that one more time. Courage compels us to reach out while comfort causes us to remain stagnant. You see, when we experience discomfort, oftentimes we will reach back to what is familiar so that we can regain a sense of calm. And let me tell you, if you are watching this right now, there is some time over the past 20-something weeks that you have been uncomfortable. And so my question is, what have you reached towards during those seasons of discomfort? You see, maybe it's rainbow and bunny or, you know, each of us. We have, we have comfort food. I like sweet potato pie. I really do. Red velvet cake and the ever-present key lime pie. Sometimes when we are out of sorts, we're trying to find a sense of normal, we're off kilter, we're off balance, but yet it's like, how do, I, how do I find my sense of control? You see, the comfort is really all about what we can and can't control. And when we can't control anything around us, then what we do is we try to control everything that's going on inside of us. And maybe it is a, it is a comfort food that we like. What's your comfort food that you go to? Or maybe there's a comfort place. Maybe you like the beach, or maybe you like the, the forest, maybe you like the desert. There are places that we go that are comfortable, or we have what I want to say is we have comfort people. There's the difference between comfort people and people who comfort you. Let me explain. You see, comfort people are people who wholeheartedly agree with us on everything and will never challenge our thinking. They wholeheartedly agree we'll never challenge our thinking. They never challenge us to grow or change. And while we need people to comfort us, we don't need comfort people and we don't need to be comfort people. You see, when we act out and we are in search for people to affirm our feelings, sometimes we will reach out to those comfort people to make sense of ourselves. Like, oh, like, yeah, that, that happened, right? Oh, that was right. Oh, you see it on Facebook all the time. Somebody will post something controversial, hoping that somebody will just do a like or do a hug or do a love just so that you can feel better about yourself. That is a comfort person. And guess what? That becomes unhealthy. Why? Because comfort people can become an echo chamber that allows us to live in our own dysfunction because they'll never push us towards our calling. The echo chamber, and, and what we do is we say void, we say a word, and it comes back to us. We, we, we post a post, and we get a bunch of likes, or a bunch of hugs, or a bunch of loves, and we're like, yeah, 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 that's right, but God could be saying, hey, I'm not calling you towards that. Yes, the thing about it is, when our aim is to please people, God could be frowning behind us, but we're sitting there comfortable in our sin. We're comfortable in our dysfunction. We're comfortable, and it becomes the society that we live in. It becomes the culture that we, that we cultivate. Comfort is not where we, where we want to go because the value that we stretch towards, the value for courageous diversity is just going to take courage even at the expense of our comfort. You see, while comfort people make us feel good in the moment, they don't help us to pursue. They don't help us to pursue the others. They become these unhealthy echo chambers that end up destroying people, it destroys relationships, it destroys friendships, because then we come out like, okay, yeah, I know, I got this, no, as opposed to being challenged and saying, man, maybe I had it wrong. I want to challenge you that we have to pursue courage over comfort. We pursue courageous diversity and stretch towards over our own desire to hold on to rainbow or hold on to bunny. You see, when we intentionally pursuing diversity, and that's what I mean ethnicity, I mean socioeconomic status, I mean political diversity, when we are pursuing those things, we must have the courage to say these three things. We have to have the courage to say, I'm sorry. We have to have the courage to say, I'm sorry. No, 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 what are we sorry for? When you pursue relationships with people who are different than you, you are going to step on each other's toes. Like, just, I just want to go ahead and name it out there. It's not good or it's not bad, but you will step on each other's toes. And that's what, when you step on somebody's toe, it's the humility to say, I'm sorry. 
You see, when we're doing this dance of courageous diversity and reaching towards the other, I like to define it as just that, as a dance. And when you're dancing, guess what? You're going to step on somebody's toes, but we have to commit to continue to dance, continue to pursue. Here's the second thing. We have to have the courage to say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know confronts pride. Because guess what? Haven't you seen, or maybe you've been that person, I know I've been that person at times, who just wants and needs to have an answer for everything. <laughs> and so make up something on the spot, or we just kind of start talking ourselves out of something, or we're just going or going, as opposed to saying, oh, like, although that wasn't my experience, I don't know what it felt like for you to experience that. And for that, I can extend grace and extend love. When you have these relationships with people who are shaped differently, who think differently, you have to be able to say, I don't know. And here's the third thing. When we want to pursue courage, we have to have the courage to say, I want to understand rather than be understood. I want to understand rather than be under. You see, everybody wants to be understood. And it's easy to, 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 to lay in that culture, to lay in that, in that environment. Like, I, I just want somebody to understand me. But what if everybody, as opposed to defending their own desire to be understood, we vehemently fought to understand others? We didn't hold up our own platforms. We thought to, we, we, we made space to listen and to receive. You see, Proverbs 18, 1 and 2, it reminds us of this hard message. It says, an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. What is this person? All right, they're unfriendly and they are pursuing things for themselves. They're not stretching towards or reaching out. In verse 2. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. Wow. How many conversations have you been in where you know that the person who was sitting across from you was not listening to understand, but they were listening to then wait for you to take a breath so that they can interject their point? Or how many times have you approached conversations with individuals who may think differently, whether it's politically or about what's going on, and as opposed to listening and trying to understand, I, I think it is our natural human reaction to defend and air our own opinions, but this is reminding us, if we don't want to understand, we are literally acting foolish. We are acting foolish. We must seek to understand rather than be understood. In the book, To Kill a Mockingbird, Atticus, Atticus Finch, Fitch, he says this. If you can learn a simple trick, Scout, you'll get along a lot better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until, uh, until you consider things from his point of view, until you climbed inside of his skin and walked around in it. He literally described the incarnation. The word became flesh, left the comforts of heaven, and walked around in human skin. And because of that, he has empathy for each and every one of us. Because of that, he, he left his comfort and he had the courage to come out of heaven. That is the posture that we want to take. That is the value that we hold. And there's another quote by Maya Angelou that I want to, share. She says this, I think we all have empathy. We may not have enough courage to display it. You see, it's, in a, it's inside all of us. But do we have the courage when, it's, when, it, seems, when it seems wrong to, to move towards the other side, when it seems wrong to move towards the person that you, uh, that you disagree with. Because there, there is intentional polarization happening in our culture. It's also present in our churches. And do we have enough courage to reach across the aisle to someone who may think, look, or act differently than us? I believe the empathy is inside of us. Because like I said at the top, when you really take on someone else's view and you understand their perspective, while you may not agree, you leave changed. You leave with your heart that grows bigger. Do we have the courage to stand alone and pursue those who may be different? Right, take inventory 
of your personal relationships? Where do you have a unique opportunity to pursue the value of stretch toward or courageous diversity? Maybe it's with a coworker. Maybe it's with someone who is on your feed who whenever they post, you want to mute them. Maybe it's someone, maybe it's a family member who, for some reason, the, the culture of this time has caused a divide in you so long. I want to challenge you to stretch toward that person. Here's another question. Which one is most difficult for you to stretch toward? Is it someone of a different age, a different ethnicity, a different political opinion? Which one is that? I would encourage you to lean in and ask yourself, why, why do I not like them? Why do I not like or love or have empathy for that other? And we stretch toward them. You see, diversity, it's not a political ploy. It is a biblical value that we see in Scripture. And there's a beautiful image, and I'm just going to read the scripture. It is, it is in Revelation chapter 7, and it begins with verse 9. It says, As after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their heads. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. That's the image I want to see on earth. The prayer on earth as it is in heaven. And what do we see? We see people from different nations, tribes, and languages all coming together to worship the true and living king. And that's what I want to invite you today. And if we live into the value of courageous diversity and stretch toward, we can see heaven on earth. I am waiting for the day that we come back into our space and we're worshiping and there are people from different tribes, languages, and tongues, and we are all saying the same thing in the language of our choice, in the language, in our home language. That's a beautiful imagery. And I want to experience heaven on earth. The question is, do you? And I think we can get there. If we practice these two values, courageous diversity and stretch toward, will it be easy? No. But I can promise you, it will be worth it. Let us pray. God, you are amazing. And you give us this picture, a picture of heaven. And you give us a path of how to get there. Jesus, his heart grew towards us because he became us. Lord, give us the strength to stretch towards and intentionally pursue those who we deem are the other. Those who we deem may be unfit because that's what you did. You did it when we didn't deserve it. So let us do it even if we don't feel others deserve it. Give us strength to do this. Let us stretch. Let us be courageous and pursue relationships and leave the comforts that are around us. Yes, it will be uncomfortable, but your promise is you will be with us and you will comfort. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen, amen. Now, we're going to get ready to prepare to receive communion, which is the greatest act of stretch toward that we've ever seen. So I want to invite you to receive your, to get your elements as our team sings a song.
As we come to the table, I just want us to be reminded of the comfort that Jesus left in order to save each and every one of us. Like this, this is stretch toward, literally leaping out of heaven, putting on human flesh, becoming one of us just to save us. If you remember the Garden of Gethsemane right before uh, he, he goes to the cross, he's like, if it's possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He sacrifices comfort for each and every one of us. And I want us to remember that as we receive this meal, where, where are you finding comfort right now? Is it in a person? Is it in a group? Is it with food? Where are your comfort zones that can be unhealthy? And I want to invite us to partake in what Christ did in the greatest level of uncomfortability. You see, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave thanks. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And in the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. As long as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we show forth our belief that Jesus Christ left his comfort to save you and me and that we can all come together in a way, in a reconciled humanity to Christ and back to one another.
We are gonna pursue our calling over our comfort through the bridge called courage. You see, this week, we need to be courageous. Maybe for you, it's just saying, I'm sorry, or I don't know, or seeking to understand rather than be understood. But whatever it is, I believe if we commit to those practices and even beyond, that we'll be able to create this beautiful picture that we see in Revelation of all nations, all tribes, all tongues, who are together worshiping the true and living King. So if I can, I would love to leave you with the blessing. So if we can extend our hands, the brothers and sisters of Park Crest Christian Church, may this week you continue to dance. May this week we apologize. May this week we say, I don't know, or this week we seek to understand rather than be understood because those are the building blocks that will allow us to engage people in a way that lives out the value of stretch toward and courageous diversity. We commit to doing this because we want to see your kingdom come and live out what you're already experiencing in heaven here on earth. We will do this this week and take steps towards that. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys right here, same time, same channel. So thank you again for joining us. It's been awesome being here with you. I just want to encourage you one last time. If you want to get connected, please check out our website, parkrest.org, and be a part of what we're doing. You can also partner with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, by liking videos like this one here today, and uh, just, just again, stay up to date with the content that we're creating because we want to minister to you and through you. So thank you for joining us. God bless you. Que Dios los bendiga. Take care, Parkrest. <laughs>